Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, I'm diving right back into some holiday DIYs. Um, it's been a rough month and we had a lot happening with the hur two hurricanes that came through our area, lots of damage, um, and it was just a really stressful time. I haven't done a whole lot of videoing or DIYs or anything, so I'm kind of behind schedule. So I said, you know what? Christmas makes me happy. I just gonna I am going to just skip over the other plans that I had and dive right back into Christmas. So that's what we are doing in today's video. I am working on this really cute little journal planner. I do one of these almost every year and I'm going to show you how I do it. So like I just mentioned, um, I do one of these journal planners almost every year. I've been doing them for years. As long as I can remember planning my own Christmas, I've been making a journal for it. So I like to use these actual pre-made um, notebooks and I also grabbed some fabric that I like. I have some scraps of the Santa Claus fabric and the little reindeer fabric I've used on some other projects so I'm going to use that as well as some paper. These are just some 12 by 12 scrapbook style papers that came from um, a book of holiday papers that I just picked up at Michael's. So I liked these so I'm going to kind of set these aside and we'll use these in this journal. So for this particular journal, I am not going to be making a spine. I'm just going to be wrapping the existing notebook with my fabric. So I made sure to cut a piece of fabric that is not too big, um, but just wide enough to fit over the top of the front and back cover of my journal, giving me about an inch of room all the way around. So I'm going to just take my pinking shears, as you'll see here in a minute, and I'm just going to go ahead and trim that fabric so that I have a smaller piece piece to work with so I'm not working with this huge big chunk of fabric. So there is my fabric. Um, I'm also going to be using some Mod Podge. I like Mod Podge to at attach fabric. You can also use Fabrifix, but I find that Mod Podge sets a little bit smoother and you don't necessarily see those bleed throughs from the glue that sometimes the Fabrifix does. So as you can see, I grabbed my Fabrifix, but then I changed my mind and decided to use my Mod Podge instead. Um, because you can kind of paint on the Mod Podge and you won't get those kind of glue spots um, that you sometimes get with the Fabrifix. So here I go, just pouring a little bit of this glue on the back side of my cover of my um, notebook that I have here. You can use pretty much any kind of notebook. I like these um, these style notebooks that have like the rounded corners. I don't necessarily like to use like a um, spring bound or a binder style notebook. I prefer to use these composition style notebooks. Um, and this is usually what I use. And actually this year I did something a little bit different. Um, I'm not using lined paper in this notebook. I'm using more of like a grid or a graph type of paper. In this notebook so as you can see I'm just using a little sponge I'm sponging on my Mod Podge just making sure that it's nice and smooth all the way around all the way around all of the edges and sides um, I just want my fabric to stick really well I don't want any bubbles or any um, you know seams popping open so just make sure you have a good amount of Mod Podge and then I'm gonna just take this little booklet or this little notebook and I'm going to flip it around here and set it right down on top of my fabric in the top right hand corner. Um, like I said, leaving about an inch to an inch and a half of fabric all the way around because we are going to wrap that around the cover. Um, so again, just pushing that fabric right down into the Mod Podge so that it sets really nicely. Like I said, Mod Podge is great for this type of a project because you don't get those glue bleed throughs. So I'm just pushing it down. I'm going to repeat this same process on the front cover as well, 
paying attention to like the the spine um, where you're opening and closing the book I'm gonna make sure that I have that glued down really well so that way when I'm opening and closing this because I use this journal a lot this time of year I am I literally take it with me almost everywhere I go whenever I see stuff if I'm out and about and I'm like either Christmas shopping or looking for ideas for holiday recipes or thrifting or anything like that I kind of always keep this in my bag and um, you know I'll I'll go to it and I'll look up things if I'm looking for something I'll have a shopping list in here or I'll put ideas in here jot things down yeah, so this is something that I will be opening and closing a lot. So I want to just make sure that this cover is held down really good and especially on the spine where that, you know, moves open and close. All right, so again, just smoothing this glue out just so that I don't get any bubbles. And then we're going to take our fabric and pull it over on the top. As you can see, I kind of have a few little creases in the fabric. You could press the fabric out ahead of time. I don't. I find that usually if you have enough Mod Podge on there, you can usually, usually press those folds right out and it will stick right into that Mod Podge. So that's what I'm doing here, just making sure it's really nice and set. And then I'll let this um, air dry for about 30 minutes or so before I do anything more with it because I don't really want to open it and close it um, until it's dry. All right, so I've let it dry for a little bit and now I'm going to start folding in these edges um, to the inside of the front and back cover. So with um, this, I'm actually going to be using my Fabrifix instead of the Mod Podge. You could definitely use the Mod Podge still if you wanted to. Um, but I want this to be really strong and the Fabrifix is a little stronger than the Mod Podge. So that's why I am doing this on the inside cover. But you will notice as I'm doing this, there will be a little bit of bleed through um, where this, you can see the Fabrifix kind of bleed through the fabric. So as you can see, I just put a little bit of glue on the corner and I'm folding that corner in and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Just putting that fabric fix kind of just in a little square on the corner and I'm folding up the corner and just sticking it right down into that fabric fix. Like I said, there is a little bit of bleed through. It does get a little bit of stickiness on my finger fingers. Um, and then I'm going to go all the way down the side that I'm going to fold up my side piece. So you'll see here, I'll just fold that side piece right up and push that right down into the fabric. I'm making sure to get on top of my fabric as well. Um, so that way it sits down um, right into the fabric and there's not any flaps that are open. I don't want any open flaps. I am going to be covering this back page with some sort of a paper. So I just want this fabric to stick really, really nicely. So I'm folding that all down. Like I said, you'll see the little bit of bleed through with the fabric fix, but the fabric fix is really really strong and it's meant to hold fabric. So that's why I wanted to use it for this portion of the DIY. All right, so now that I'm near the seam or where the binding of the book is, I'm going to just cut a little notch in the fabric so that way it folds up easily underneath um, my paper. And I'm, I started with my scissors, but I'm actually going back in with my knife and just making sure that that um, cut line is really precise so that I can fold it right up under right up under my paper and just like I did on the sides I'm gonna put more fabric fix down and we'll fold that bottom um, piece of fabric right up over the bottom page you can see by cutting that little notch now the fabric will fold up really nice right underneath your back page of your journal and that's what I wanted. I want it to be nice and clean looking. I don't want any like pieces flopping out. So again, it's just kind of sticky and kind of a mess to work with um, because it bleeds through the fabric pretty good. So I'm just, again, using my bone folder, just pressing that right in and pushing it upwards and outwards just so that um, I know I have a good hold. Like I said, all of this is gonna be covered. So I'm gonna continue this all the way around the entire journal. So I have my entire journal covered and it's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to continue working with it um, only because 
for the sake of the video, I want to get this video done, but I am going to put another piece of fabric on the spine. And I really have, I really like this Santa Claus fabric that I have. I think it's really cute. It's just a scrap of something that I used previous. Um, but I'm going to just use a thin little piece of this fabric just to cover my spine. And again, I'm going to use fabric fix for this. So again, I'm just going to be very generous with it because the spine is where the book is opening and closing constantly. So I don't Want this fabric to bubble or pop up um, as you can see I'm kind of putting it on in a zigzag motion you can go back in with like um, a paintbrush or something if you wanted to just to make sure it's really smooth but I find kind of if you just put it on like this and smooth it out with your fingers it usually sticks pretty good all right so there's one side I'm gonna flip my journal book over on the other side do the same exact thing and kind of just fold that over paying close attention to the back portion of the seam because like I said you're going to be opening and closing this a lot so you want to make sure that this fabric is stuck down really well. So as you can see there's all of the glue. I'm going to fold this fabric right over the top again and push it right down into that glue kind of pushing out all of the little crevices and um folds and then I'm going to just take my scissors and go in and cut off the ends for this. Um, you'll see once it's all smoothed out it's pretty easy to just cut off those ends. It does help if you have really nice sharp scissors for something like this. My scissors are actually getting on the duller side. Um, so I'm just kind of carefully making my way all the way around. Um, this journal I mean, I'm going to be using this a lot this season, and so I don't mind if the edges aren't um, perfect on this one as far as, like, if there's any frayed pieces or whatnot. Um, I just like the look of the fabric on the spine like that. I'm actually going to cover up some of the frayed edges with this red lace that I have here as well. So we'll just finish that off on top of what I have here just to kind of give it a more finished look. So I'm just trimming up some of these pieces of string that have frayed, but it looks pretty good as is. Um, so now I'm going to, like I said, take some of this red lace. This is really pretty scalloped red lace. I think I got this from Timu. Um, but I'm going to just do the edge with this scalloped lace. And again, I'm just going to use my fabric fix. You could stitch this on um, if you have a sewing machine that is capable of like stitching over um, like a heavier material. If you wanted to like open this book right up and um, stitch it on. I'm not. This is basically a no no sew project for me so I am just using glue for the entire thing but yes I'm just going to go ahead and cover my seam with my red lace. Um, I usually do this whenever I put fabric on a spine of a journal or a book. I usually try to cover up my seams with some sort of a lace and I think it just adds to the look of the journal. Um, as well as it helps the spine from coming undone or fraying any further. So again, just trimming off those edges a little bit more and there you go. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back of the book as well. All right, so it is time to put something on the cover of my journal planner. I have this little double-sided image. I think it came with a garland, um, like a vintage type garland um, it's the perfect size for the cover and I love that it's reversible front and back so I'm just gonna pick the side that I like best again here I am trimming up just a few little scraggler pieces of string um, I'm gonna distress this up with my frayed burlap distress oxide um, I just got this one this is a new one that I just got I really like this color I usually use um, the vintage photo but this one's similar in coloring and um, it's a little bigger of a container so I've been using this a lot with my Christmas um, DIYs this year so again I'm just going all around the edges of this die cut it is a cardstock die cut so it's a little bit thicker and um, but yeah I want to just to just dress up those edges just a little bit and I'm just gonna glue it right on the center of my book um, as you can see here with my fabric fix making sure that I get all of those little pieces of um, die cut like the little antlers I really want to get glue on all of those I don't want any of those peeling up 
Um, so just be being really um, frugal with my glue on this because I want this to stick really good. Um, so yeah, there's the glue just going on my die cut and this is going to just go right down in the front of my journal. I love that little vintage image. I think it's so cute. I love the little vintage deer. Um, the Santa Claus and deer, it fit perfectly with this theming that I had. So just pressing this right down as you can see and this is going to stick really nicely. So I also want to do some other little embellishments to this journal as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this green pom-pom ribbon and I'm just going to line the covers with the green pom-pom ribbon. I'm going to put one um, strip of it right on the front cover and I'm going to do the same thing right on the back cover as well. And again using that Fabrifix glue, I'm just going to go right down the seam, right down the edge of the page with the Fabrifix and I'll stick that pom those pom-pom ribbon um, strip right into yeah. the glue and then I'll cut yeah. it off so that yeah. way it gives it kind of like a finished edge. I love pom-poms. Yep. It's on very nostalgic um, and fun and um, yeah, it just adds to the look of the book. So I'm gonna do this on the front and back as well. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more decor. I have some of this green yarn. This is actually vintage, I believe. I'm not really sure. I think I got it at the Goodwill bins. Um, but I'm gonna take a good amount of it and I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers quite a few times because I'm gonna do kind of like a little um, type of bow. And then I'm gonna go in between my middle fingers and then I'm gonna go up underneath the wrap in my middle fingers. This is how I do my bows. Whenever I'm doing a bow, I will do it this way. Um, it just keeps it nice and organized when you're doing a bow. And then I'll just take that little portion that I pulled up in between my fingers and like tie it in a knot. And you'll see it creates just kind of like the perfect little bow. Um, and again, I'm just tying this in a quick little knot here and we'll pull that tight and now we have kind of just a little messy um yarn bow which i'm going to glue right on the front of my book here i think that's really cute and we'll add some little embellishments to that as well i like dimension on the front of my journals so i like adding things like this i didn't want to add greenery to this one i wanted this journal to be a little bit um, softer and more usable. I find when I add greenery to journals, um, especially on a journal that you're using on like an everyday basis, um, I just don't want pieces falling off. All right, so in addition to the little um, yarn bow, I'm gonna put this Seasons Greetings, I think it was a pick from a floral arrangement or a greenery arrangement at the holidays and I am using my hot glue on this one only because it's plastic and the fabric fix will work on this but I find that hot glue sometimes works a little bit better on plastic you could use both or you could use like an e6000 as well if you want it to be really sturdy but I think my hot glue will work fine for this one so again just being really careful to get all that hot glue all over the entire bit of plastic writing so that way it sits nicely um, on the front of the page and uh, yeah it just adds a little bit more dimension to that page. All right, so I have a few little accessories. I have this pretty little rhinestone and pearl button and then a couple of little mini red bells. I'm gonna just hot glue these right on the front of that little yarn bow just to give it an added little bling. I like to spruce up the cover with some bling. Um, and so as you see, I'm just using hot glue for this and we're just gonna set this down right in the center. These little uh, bells look like little berries, I think, which are really cute. All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna start working on the inside covers and we're gonna add some paper to the inside covers. Now for this journal, I'm not doing any measuring. I'm actually just using the journal book as a guide for my paper. I wanna leave about a quarter of an inch space all the way around so you can see the fabric underneath that front page, but I'm just marking the page um, with a little pencil just so that I know what to cut when I go ahead and cut it with my straight edge trimmer. Um, so I'll take this paper out and just go ahead and give it a quick 
cut, as you can see, that I'm doing right here now. I need to get a new cutter. This cutter has seen better days. I use it all the time and the blade's dull and one of the blades fell off, so I'm definitely in desperate need of a new cutter. So, but here's our page and I'm gonna go ahead and round my corners as well. Um, since the corners on this notebook are rounded anyhow, I think the rounded paper will look good with it. And as you can see, I made the paper so that it slides right up close to the rest of the binded paper. Um, I didn't want to have any of that white backing of the original page showing. So I just made sure when I measured it or when I marked the paper that I made it wide enough so that it was going to fit right up close. And again, I'm using my Fabrifix glue going all the way around the edges on this, being really careful to get right out to the edges with this. And then I'm just going to completely cover this paper. And then this is going to be the inside front cover of my journal book here. I'm going to do the same thing on the back page. I think I ended up using a little bit different of a print, but something similar um, as far as paper goes. Um, and this is cardstock. I am using like a lightweight cardstock for this. So as you can see, I'm sliding that right down underneath and just pressing it down nice and tight so that there's no white paper showing through. And uh, it covers up all of those um, seams of the fabric really nicely. And so, yeah, that looks really, really good. All right, so like I said, I'm going to do the back cover as well. All right, so I have some of this really pretty vellum paper. I bought a paper pack of vellum paper from um, Michael's just recently. They had 40% off all of their Christmas papers. So I bought a big pack of 12 by 12 vellum. I use a lot of vellum at Christmas time. And I thought this um, pretty like snowflake print was nice. So what I'm doing again, I'm not measuring. I'm just using my page as a guide and I'm going to make like a triangular shaped pocket. I'm going to do the same on the front and the back. I'm using the, the lines in the paper as kind of a guide on to where I want to cut it. Um, so again, I just made a little mark on the left hand side of the paper and on the bottom and I'll use my trimmer. I'll just line those little marks up and just make a nice straight cut with those. As you can see, I'm just lining up those little marks right along my cut line and then go ahead and, and cutting that. So now I have a nice straight triangle pocket that I'm going to go ahead and glue. I am just rounding the 90 degree angle on this so it matches up with the paper underneath. I'm not going to do any rounding on the other corners. Um, I'm just going to leave those sharp, but I will go ahead and use my Fabrifix glue and we'll just glue this down right on the inside front cover. So I'll have a nice little pocket that I'll be able to put my, I have, um, the pad or the little writing tablet that we did, I'll be able to slide that right in this little pocket. So again, just going along the outside edge very carefully, just with a thin line of Fabrifix. And that will hold that pocket in there nicely. Just setting it right down on my paper. Again, I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch space just so that way, um, I don't know, I, I just think it looks uniform um, like that. But I, I checked it ahead of time to make sure that my um, tablet would fit into this pocket and it fits perfectly. All right, so now I'm taking more of that red lace ribbon and I'm going to just glue some of this red lace ribbon right along the edge of my pocket just so it gives it an added little, I don't know, I think it looks really nice and kind of just covers up that plain edge. So again, just using Fabrifix and we're gonna just make a little squiggly all the way down the edge of the Fabrifix where that pocket is. And I'll put my lace in that Fabrifix and then I'll cut it off when I'm done just so that I know I have the right amount. So I'm not wasting any. This stuff is I use lace and um, trim like this a lot during this season so it is very well loved and I want to get every little piece out of it that I can so I try not to waste it 
Okay, so this is when I am making a little tablet, a little writing tablet, and I have this piece of chipboard. It's the cover to some paper that I had probably thrifted, um, and it's going to fit just in the right size to fit down in this pocket um, of my front cover of my uh, journal planner. So I'm just doing a quick little measurement on this only because I want to make sure that I don't do anything too big, but I want it as big as I can get it because like I said, it's going to be kind of like a writing tablet that I'm going to put behind the pages of my journal. I like to have some sort of a writing tablet so that way when I'm writing, um, you know, if I'm using markers or something, that they don't bleed through onto the next page. It will actually bleed through onto the tablet. So I'm using just this cover, this chipboard. You can use whatever you can use cardboard um, I like this chipboard because it's a little heavier and it's nice and sturdy so it makes like a good um, like a backer plate and again I'm just using my crafting knife and I'm just going ahead and cutting out the size that I needed for that little board and just like I did with the front and back cover, I'm going to go ahead and line this board with the same fabric just so that it's all kind of matches and looks nice together. So I have a little bit extra of this fabric. So again, just using my fabric fix, I could use my uh, Mod Podge for this. Um, I didn't want to take the time and use the Mod Podge. I was in a hurry. So as you can see, I'm just rounding the edges on this little tablet really quickly as well. Um, because, I mean, everything else is rounded. I might as well round this. And not only that, if it's a rounded edge, it will slide into that front pocket cover a little bit nicer. So again, I'm just going to use my Fabri Fix on this one. Um, I'm gonna just try to cover as best as I can. I did have a little bit of bleed through on the fabric onto the board, um, but because it's like, um, it's it's kind of more of a useful thing. It's not really decorative. I mean, I guess it is decorative, but it's more of a useful piece. I wasn't super concerned about the bleed through on this one. Um, this isn't something that you have to do. I just prefer to do it since this is going to be my own um, journal planner that I'm going to be using. I, I, I like to use a board like this. So anyhow, I covered it in the uh, Fabri Fix. I'm going to just lay this right down into my... Um, fabric and I'm leaving about a half inch to three quarters of an inch all the way around and then I'll just go ahead and cut off the excess and then just like I did with the front and back covers I'm just going to fold this fabric over um, the same exact way once I get this pushed down nice and tight again so doing the corners the same way I did the cover just putting a little bit of glue in the corners obviously I don't need as much because I didn't do it as thick um, of a wrap of fabric it's only like I said about three quarters of an inch but just going all around the entire thing doing the corners first and then I'll fold in the sides and um, glue the sides in this is a little bit messy because my fabric fix kind of got everywhere but that's okay um, like I said I could have used the Mod Podge um, the Mod Podge would have probably been a better choice for wrapping this but I was in a hurry and I didn't feel like getting that Mod Podge out. So that's what we're using in this one. So just holding all those corners in tightly and then going around each edge and using the Fabri Fix on the edge to kind of fold over the edges and we'll be ready to add the paper. Okay, so this is all dry. It is slightly tacky still, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep on working. I'm going to use this lined paper. It's a little bit different than the cover, but I like the look of it. So again, I'm just using the tablet as a little template. I want to leave about an eighth to a quarter of an inch all the way around so that you can kind of see the fabric poking through, but I'm just making the two little marks and then I'll use my cutter to go ahead and cut that paper. And yet again, rounding those edges so that it's cohesive with the rest of the design. And as you can see, this will fit right on the back side, or actually it's going to be the front side of my little writing tablet. Um, again, using the Fabri Fix just all around the edges just to adhere this um, cardstock paper onto the front of this chipboard. And we'll have a nice little writing tablet that will go under each one of the pages. That way I can easily um, write on write in this journal. Um, I like to put little writing tablets in my journal, but this one especially because I use it 
so frequently and I like it to stay neat and tidy without having like marker bleed throughs. So I find that's probably the best use of these little writing tablets. So I'm using my bone folder just to push that paper down so it's nice and flat so I don't have any little creases or bubbles or anything like that in there. But as you can see, there's my little writing tablet. It's perfect. There's a little bleed through, but that's okay. And I will show you what it looks like in the journal. So here's the journal. And if you open up that front cover, that little writing tablet, you can, uh, I'm trying to get my page here. You can stick your writing tablet right under your page and you have a nice spot to write on. And then you can slide it right back into that little pocket and keep it right in the pocket, the front of your journal. So that is it. I think I ended up adding um, a little grommet to the top of my little tablet just so that I could put a little ribbon in it and be able to pull it in and out and know where it was in my book once my book got a little bit larger. Sometimes I've done them before without the little ribbon at the top and they've gotten lost in the journal because the journal gets so thick and chunky. So I'm just punching a little hole at the top. I'm grabbing a little grommet and I have a box of all kinds of different colors that I just got on Amazon. I will list this in the description below. Um, I love all the different colors. So I'm just going to use a little red one. I'm popping it in that little um, chipboard. It is a little bit on the thicker side, so I definitely need to use a backing for this one. Um, I don't usually use the backings on my thinner paper, but if it's a thicker paper like this or a thicker piece of cardstock or even cardboard, I do like to use the backing because it definitely helps um, keep it smooth and, you know, allow that grommet to set better. So again, I just poked that little grommet right in there and now I have a cute little grommet. I'm just tightening it up on both sides as you can see. And then I'll put a cute little ribbon in there so that I'll be able to find this once this journal gets chunky. So actually I am going to just rip a little strip of that um, Santa Claus fabric that I used on the spine. I only have a little piece left of it, but I thought it would match nicely. So again, just ripping a little strip of that fabric and I'm just gonna poke that through the little hole and make just like a little ribbon at the top with this fabric. I try to use up all of my scraps and stuff. I'm actually working on another video at the same time I'm working on this um, where I'm making some scrappy tag rings with all of my scrap fabric and scrap paper and just trying to really use everything up. So I think I put a little bow in the top of this just to kind of keep it so it wasn't so floppy but easy to find. So that's kind of cute. I might put a little dangle or a little charm or something on it at some point, but that's it for now. Like I said, I'm just trying to use up those little scrappy pieces and this is my personal journal. So I don't know. I just try to make it useful. All right. So I had to add one of my little bottle cap charms that I made. I just stuck it on a simple little paper clip at the top. I can use it to attach the paper to the board if I want, or if I can put it in the page that I'm working on, whatever. I just thought it was really cute. Um, like a cute little addition to my board. As you can see, I kind of use it around the top of the page to kind of hold my page, whatever. Perfectly usable, functional, and cute at the same time. Okay, so last but not least, I am going to attach this closure. I'm gonna make a closure out of these two little clips. These are like little metal clips that have like a little ring attached to them. I found them at the Goodwill bins. And then I have a small little piece of vintage tinsel. I don't need anything too big. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tinsel through the little ring and then I'm gonna take a little bit of hot glue and fold over the end of that tinsel onto itself to kind of hold itself onto my little clip as you can see here. So I'm gonna do one at the front 
and this will be the front cover clip. And then, like I said, I don't want this to be too long, but I want it to be big enough so that way I can chunk up this journal a little bit. So I'm gonna clip this down um, probably about five inches or so. I don't really need that much, but I'll clip this down just a little bit with some scissors and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm just gonna use the little rounded ring of the clip put my tinsel through, hot glue it, and just be careful of your fingers when you're doing this because it does seep through that tinsel and I've burned myself a hundred times doing this, but it makes a cute little closure that you can take on and off of your journal. I like making these kind of clips because you, like I said, you can take them on, you can leave them off, you can let one side hang down, you can also hang some little charms to it. Um, but yeah, so just clip it on the front and then as you'll see, I'll clip it right to the back. And once this gets chunky, this will, you know, open up a little bit. But like I said, I left a little bit of room to chunk it up, but that's just a fun little closure for it. And I don't know, I think it's perfect. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is just about it. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, like and subscribe, and we will see you again in the next video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.